So very good morning, dear friends. I welcome you all on this online interdisciplinary one week certificate course on apiculture. Dear friends, uh, myself, Mr. Rahul Jagannath Patil, presently working as assistant professor and the head department of zoology at Red Shikshan Sanstars Balwant College, Vita. So once again, on the behalf of department of zoology, I welcome you all on this second day of one week certificate course on apiculture. Dear friends, today we are going to discuss on the morphology and anatomy of honeybees. Dear friends, the honeybee has been described as the most useful of insects known to man because it provides man as well as other form of life with the basic vital services to their survival. This, this is the insect has been able to do because nature has endowed it with the special organs which enable it to live a particular way of life. To understand this creature, a closely study must be made on its morphological as well as the anatomical structure and it alone to perform such functions as gathering and the ripening nectar, collecting pollen and propolis, producing wax, etc. So, and the incidentally, the fertilizing flowering plants. So, as we know that the honeybees are very important creature of the god, which plays a crucial role in the ecosystem. So, as I discuss here, that honeybees gives to us as the honey, uh, different products like propolis and bee venom and very important is the royal jelly and as we are aware that these are the very important value or the great value in the medicine and the ayurveda so dear friends so let's start the our actual topic that is morphology and anatomy of honeybees so dear friends we start with the general morphology as we are aware that the Honeybees are belonging to class Insecta. So, whatever the characters or the morphological characters are present on the different insects which are present in that particular honeybees. So, as we know that in honeybees, body parts are modified as per their food habitats and the social life. Like any insect, body of honeybee can be distinguished in the three parts. As we know that uh, the every insect has the three body parts as like head thorax abdomen so the anterior most part of the body is called as the uh, head and the middle part is called as the thorax and the posterior one is called as the abdomen as we know that the these three different parts having the uh, different uh, spatial organs which carried out the different functions in the life of the honeybees so dear friends we will see one by one what are the different organs and what are the different functions carried out by the uh, different organs of the honeybees? So in this figure, we will uh, see that the different caste of the honeybee. So uh, as as per the morphological study, we can easily distinguish the different caste of the honeybees. Here we see that the uh, three different castes, among which we see that the size of the queen is comparatively larger or the longer than that of the other uh, other bees. So as we as we see here, the size of the queen is near about a uh, two centimeter long. Then we see that the size of the drone is comparatively larger than that of the worker bees is near about one and uh, one point four centimeter long. And the worker bees is the smallest bee of the caste of the honeybees. Uh, other peculiar character as we see here, the eyes, the shape of the eyes. As we see here, the the shape or the size of the eyes is larger the, in the drone as compared to the worker and queen bees. So then switch on the another important character uh, that is wings. When we see the wings, the size and the shape of the wings is comparatively longer than that of the than that of the uh, drones and workers. So queen has a longer uh, wings and plays the important role to only flying purpose in the queens. In worker bees and a drone, it plays a crucial role in other activities. We will see in the next slide. So dear friends, our next topic is on, uh, the next uh, topic of discussion is the head. So as we know that the head is the triangular in shape. The head has five eyes 
a pair of antennae and mouth pass consisting different organs like a mandibles and the proboscis dear friends as we know that the head is very important and the anterior most part of the every insect as like in honey bees it also plays a crucial role in the life of honey bees dear friends a head contain the different parts first we see about the eyes as we know that the there are five eyes are present on the head region of the honey bees among that the two eyes are the compound eyes and other are the ocelli so the seeing apparatus of the bee consist of a pair of compound eyes as like the eyes of human and the three small eyes are called as the ocelli in plural uh, singular it is called as the ocellus and the uh, this called as the ocellus then we see that the compound eyes are composed of the several thousands of simple light sensitive cells that called as the ometidia which able to be to distinguish light color and to detect the directional information from the sun ultraviolet rays dear friends then uh, you might have a question what is the function of ocelli so dear friends the ocelli is a false eyes or the simple eyes which only detect the uh, strength of light so uh, there is not function to seeing for uh, seeing function is not carried out by the ocelli the ocelli only carried out the function to sense the light so the eyes of the drones as as i discussed in earlier the size of the drone is larger by far than those of the worker or the queen bees so occupying a large proportion of total volume of the head as we see the uh, structure of the head of uh, that particular drone so in this figure we will uh, discuss that uh, the uh, we will see the uh, different parts of the heads so uh, they assist uh, that particular uh, eyes assist him to locate the queens he has purses her during the mating uh, flight that means the purpose of the big eyes in the drones is to assist him to locate the queen as he pursues her during the mating flight so dear friends in this figure we will discuss about the uh, different parts of the head region here we see that the three different ocellus which is present at the mid region of the uh, head uh, and uh, this called as the ocelli so uh, these are the two compound eyes present at the peripheral region of the head is the is comparatively bigger than the, the ocellus and at the head region be, uh, bears another part we will discuss in the next slides so our very important uh, next organ of the head is the antennae dear friends the antennae are the pair or the sensitive receptor whose base is situated in a small socket like membrane area present on the head wall so they move freely in every direction so the antennas functions are feel or touch and to smell and thus to guide the bees outside and inside the hive to differentiate floral and for pheromones orders and to locate have intruders dear friends uh, as we know that the the function of the antenna is uh, feel or touch to smells this is just just, just because of there are numerous uh, nerves present on that particular antennae which directly connected with the brain and that's why these are very sensitive in nature so dear friends another very important part of the uh, head of that particular bee that called as the mandibles so dear friends the mandibles are a pair of jaws suspended from the from the head and part of the bee's mouth dear friends mandibles are plays a crucial role in the life of honey bees so we will discuss one by one what are the functions of the mandibles so honey bees mandibles are all in one tools as like one of those fold of multi purpose pocket tools uh, as we see that there are the pocket and having a uh, different tools uh, used for uh, different purposes as like honey bees mandibles are used for anything that requires as like cutting grasping squeezing for example we will see the different functions one by one so here we see that the the mandible structure uh, here we see the mandible structure there are two in number so what are the different functions of the mandibles the first function of the mandible is cutting itself out of the brood of the cells so when that particular uh, uh, the honey bee is started its journey or to live its life uh, from the uh, young, that larval stage to the young one stage uh, they need to 
cut that particular brood cells and that emerge from that uh, hive to the uh, nature and for that purpose need to uh, need to cut that brood chamber cells uh, and that function was carried out by the uh, the particularly mandibles then another function is working wax scale into the honeycombs so the wax scale in the honeycombs is uh, the, is carried out by the uh, mandibles and then carrying carrying dead bees from inside the hives as we know that due to the short life span or due to the any uh, health condition uh, that particular bees are died into that particular hive and uh, everyone is need to uh, remove that dead and decayed uh, bees in the hive so for that purpose the different honey bees uh, use that mandibles to clean or to carry the dead bees from outside or inside to outside the hives the another very important function is uh, removing detritus from the hives including wood chips paper or cardboard left by the beekeepers so during the construction of the beehive what happened there are some sort of the wood clips paper or the uh, ca cardboard uh, is left in that uh, particularly uh, beehive and we need to remove that particular uh, detritus from the uh, that particular uh, hives and for that purpose the mandibles are used to clean the beehives the another important function is the curbing pieces of the bee, uh, bee breed from the storage inside the hives the another function is delivering the food to larvae as we know that the worker plays a very important role to uh, feeding the young ones and for that purpose that uh, worker bee is used or the nurser bee is used that particular mandible to feed that larvae then grooming themselves and and the queens as we know that the drone has only function uh, to reproduce uh, the queen and for that purpose they grooms outside to grooms uh, near about the queens and for that the mandibles are used for the grooming purpose uh, to the queen and uh, another function is cutting drones from their cells and helping them emerge what happens sometime uh, the drones from the different colonies are enters into the uh, other uh, others beehives and for that purpose we exclude the uh, that particular uh, honeybees are plays important role to exclude that particular uh, invaded honeybees in that particular hives and for that purpose the cutting drones from their cells and helping them to emerge outside <laughs> then another function is uh, tearing down unused queen cells as we know that the in bee hives there are near about 4 to 5 uh, cells is reserved for the queens and uh, only one say uh, one that one cells are used by the is used by that particular cell so remaining cells are uh, unused so for the tearing that uh, particular unused queen cells are used by the mandibles <laughs> then another moving wax from one area of the hives to the another area so transportation of wax from one area to another area mandibles plays crucial role then another is working propolis into hive cracks and crevices uh, sometime what happened that uh, the cracks or the uh, uh, crevices is remaining into that particular uh, hives due to the any natural cam uh, calamities or the attack of uh, different enemies so to fill that uh, the cracks or the crevices the propolis plays important role and to uh, fill that cracks the mandibles use uh, to uh, working as propolis into hive crack and crevices then uh, the beating flower petals if possible to access the pollen or nectar so for the collecting uh, the nectars or the pollens uh, we need to the beat on that flower and that function is carried out by the mandibles then another function is chewing wood to enlarge the entrance sometimes what happened that the bees are construct their hives inside the uh, uh, that we say that inside the uh, wood and uh, the entrance of that wood is small so uh, everyone needs to uh, convert the small entrance into the big so that that purpose we need to cut that opening part and for that purpose the worker bees are use their mandibles then the another very important part of the workers bee life that called as the proboscis proboscis is a tube like structure present at the mouth region the proboscis is another name of the tongue of the bees as we know that it is like the human tongue in that it is soft and can be extended dear friends as we know that 
due to the tongue we can sense the uh, different uh, food uh, taste of the different foods we can enjoy the we can feel uh, feel the uh, uh, various smells of the foods so as like this the uh, as like this the tongue of the human uh, uh, the tongue is uh, as like uh, the tongue of human the tongue of that particular uh, the function of the tongue is carried out by the proboscis so relative to the size of the uh, of the average honey bee the proboscis is long as result the evolution helping the bees to reach the center of the flowers to collect the nectar dear friends as we know that there are some sort of the flowers having a, a large uh, hole like structure and there is the size of the anther is very little and uh, for that uh, for, for that uh, uh, that flower need to pollinate and for or to collect the pollen from that uh, uh, flowers it is very difficult uh, for the worker bees and for that what happened that due to the evolution what happened the length of that particular proboscis of worker bee is enlarged and it become and long it is become a longer so so as to it is easily uh, they can uh, collect the nectars from that uh, flowers so uh, the size or the length uh, of that particular proboscis is plays the important role in the evolution of that particular honey bees dear friends the proboscis is also called uh, also used to clean their hairs or to groom one another especially in the queens as we know that the uh, social behavior in the queen is very great and uh, for that they are grooming one another especially to the queens uh, due to the help of the uh, proboscis dear friends here we see that the differentiation between the length of the proboscis so as we see here in this figure the proboscis length is uh, higher or longer in that of the worker bees as compared to to the male and the queens but when we see the uh, proboscis of male it is very short in length as compared to the queens so the queen is a uh, moderate uh, a moderate the moderate length of the proboscis so this is about the proboscis then we are switching the another part of the uh, morphological part of the honey bee that is called as the thorax so as we know that uh, the thorax is divided into the three main segment that is anterior is called as the prothorax middle is called as the mesothorax and the posterior is called as the metathorax so each bear a pair of legs so meso and metathorax each bear a pair of wings so legs and wings are locomotory organs instead of locomotion they are carried out various functions in the honey bee's life so we will see one by one so first we discuss about the wings of the honey bees here we see that the the uh, flying of honey bees uh, the size of the honey uh, the wings of the honey bees so the anterior one or the four wings is comparatively longer than that of the hind wings so the wings of the bee keep uh, honey bees like those of the most insect are thin flat and two layered the front pair is much longer than that of the uh, hind hind wings or the rears the worker wings are used both for flight and for the ventilating the hives while the drones and queens use their wings uh, for the fight purpose only so here we see that the uh, structure that is the post anterior one and the posterior one there are two the yeah, anterior one is longer than that of the posterior one so then we discuss about the uh, legs which is the part of the thorax so as we know that the each pair of legs as like the other insect the honey bees have also six legs that means three pairs of legs so each pair of legs differs in size and shape from the other two pairs that means the size and shape of the every legs and the function of the every legs is different so uh, it is joined to the six segment uh, we will discuss what are the different parts of the legs in the upcoming uh, figure the leg can be fixed uh, fixed at any of the six joint so its primary function is to help the uh, help bee to walk and run but various part also serve as special purpose so other than that of the locomotion for example the brushes on the inner surface of the pip segment that called as the tarsus of the two front legs are used to the sweeping the pollens and uh, other particles from the head eyes and the mouth parts the some tarsus Uh, tarsi of the mid legs serve as the brushing or the cleaning of the thorax while the spines found at the end of the four section of the tibia are used for the removing the pellets of the pollen and for the cleaning the wings dear friends uh, two important parts uh, are notable on the legs are the antenna cleaner and the 
uh, the front legs are present on the front legs and the pollen basket present on the hind legs. So we are focusing on this antenna cleaner and the uh, pollen basket in the next slide. So here we see, uh, see the detail about the antenna cleaner. So the antenna cleaner located in the inner margin of the tibia of the foreleg consists of a deeply cut semicircular notch equipped, equipped with a comb-like rows or a small spines. All three cast, uh, all three casts like drone, queen, workers have these cleaning apparatus. In this figure, we will see that this is the, the foreleg uh, having such type of the equipments to use to clean that particular antenna or the uh, pollen present on the head, wings, uh, head, uh, eyes, or the wings of that particular honeybee. Dear friends, another very important part of the uh, the uh, hind legs that called as the pollen basket. The tibia of the hind legs uh, of the worker bees carry a special apparatus that called as the corbiculi or the pollen basket. So corbiculi is another name of the pollen basket. Basket. So which enables her to carry the pollen into the hive. So uh, during the swarming, what happened that? that uh, particular um, uh, worker bees collect the pollen and that's stored into the pollen basket which helps to transport the pollen from that particular flower to the uh, hive. So this pollen basket are uh, concave in shape are uh, surrounded with uh, several long hairs with bind, with, uh, bind the contents into almost a solid mass along the worker to carry the load safety for. So here we see that the uh, in the TBR region we see the uh, uh, pollen are stored uh, on the hairs. So, what are the different structure present on that particular uh, uh, legs of that honeybee? We will discuss in this figure. So, here we see that the different morphological part of that particular honeybee. So, we can easily differentiate uh, that is head, thorax, and the abdomen. So, here we see that the head region we have, we see the uh, the mandibles, uh, we see the ocellus, we see the antennas. Okay, so these are the different parts of the head region and here are the uh, thorax region as we know that the thorax is divided into mainly three parts that is that we discussed that uh, there are three parts meso, meta and the prothorax. Okay, so what happened that <coughs> which uh, the thorax consists of the uh, pair of legs as well as the pair of uh, wings. So here we see that the uh, when you talk about the structure of that particular legs. Uh, the the part of that leg which connected with the thorax that is called as the coxa and coxa is connected with the trochanter and then the femur and then tibia then metatarsus and the last one is the tarsus so when you talk about the hind legs there is the tibia and tibia having a pollen press or the pollen brush which plays important role to collect the pollen grains so when we talk about the middle leg, uh, uh, sorry, we talk about the four legs, we see here the antenna cleaner, here is the brush-like structure, the notches which pay, plays important role uh, or to hold the antenna and clean the antenna from the dust particles or the pollen particles. So this is about the morphological structure or the uh, figures of the honeybees. Then we discuss about the abdomen. So first abdominal segment is united with the mesothorax and forms anatomically a part of thorax known as the propodium. Dear friends, uh, the propodium is structure which connects the thorax to the abdomen. Dear friends, the bee larva has a 10 abdominal segment but in adult worker, abdomen appears 6 segmented. The segment 8 to 10 are reduced in size and first segment that is propodium is transferred to thorax during the pupal stage. Dear friends, the abdominal bears sting, wax gland, and scent glands, and the genetilia in addition to the other viscera. Dear friends, as we know that the function of stings, what are the function of wasp gland, and what is the function of the scent gland. Okay, so in worker, in workers, the egg lying apparatus that is ovipositor is modified into a sting. Dear friends, queen use that ovipositor for eggs, egg laying and for a stinging rival queen. So in this figure, we will uh, see that the important structure of the abdomen, uh, we are focusing on the important structure of abdomen is that the uh, stinger. Uh, and due to this, uh, due to the pains of stinger, we are feel fear or we are, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we will fear the honeybees 
and we are avoid to contact with the honeybees but dear friends as we know that the stingers is only present in that particular queen bee and the worker bees it is, it is absent in the drone bees so what happen that when that particular honey bees is stingers the swelling is occurs because uh, that sting is connected with the venom gland which is present at the abdominal region of the that particular uh, uh, worker bees and having uh, some toxic material like neurotoxic or the uh, cytotoxic material uh, which uh, which introduce it into the uh, your skin and due to that uh, toxic nature of or the due to the venom what happened the swelling is takes place so as we know that uh, there is one giant apis dorsata due to the stinging of that uh, honey bees what happened uh, sometime death of the humans is also occurs so dear friends uh, of all compounds uh, of the anatomy of the bee, a stinger is the one of the lemons considered first. The stinger is the bee's only true line for the defense. We have the hands to fight the enemies. We have the legs to fight uh, fight with the uh, enemies. But the in 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 case of the honeybees, the stinger is the only a uh, line of defense. So honeybees will sting only as a last resort when the threatened because. Once they have used their stinger, they typically dies. So they are not usually a uh, sting to everyone because at the last stage, what happened that if they are uh, feeling a uh, very danger, very danger to from that particular enemy, at the time they will bite or they will sting to that particular human or that particular enemies. And as I told you that after the stinging, they typically dies because what happened that the sting of that particular stinging apparatus of that particular honeybee is connected with the the intestine or the digestive system of that particular worker bee. So uh, during the stinging, what happened? The stinging apparatus, which is, uh, which is uh, inserted into the skin of that particular enemy, which is remains in that particular skin of the enemies. And with that skin, what happened? That the part of the some uh, the part of the digestive system of that honey bee is attached to with the stings. So what happened? Due to the loss of the small part of the sting, uh, small part of the uh, digestive system, what happened? That uh, after some uh, days or after some hours, that particular bee is die. So the stinging differs across worker, queen and drone as follows. So as we know that the workers, the stinger is uh, barbed and once inserted into the human skin will be torn away as the bee struggles to face herself. So this usually result in the death of the worker as I told you that why the death is occurs after the stinging. <laughs> Then we discuss about uh, the queen. A queen stinger has no bark and she can therefore sting repeatedly without losing it. So no, not however, the sting by queens, uh, by queens bees are quite uh, rare. That means uh, very rarely a queens uh, uh, will be by to that particular enemies. Then we talk about the drones. So nothing worry about the drones because uh, the drones have no stinger, so we we need we don't need to afraid about the drones. But uh, think over that when we can we when we attach we will contact with the worker or uh, the queens because the number of worker is more in that particular hives. So uh, just take the precaution when we you are handling the hives, uh, use the proper equipments uh, during the uh, handling of that particular beehives. So this is about the stingers. Then we talk about the anatomical structures dear friends we are not going to discuss in detail about the anatomical features of their particular honey base we are focusing on some parts so dear friends uh, we will first discuss about the digestive system is well developed is unique in having the esophagus with expanded honey stomach which stored in the collected nectars dear friends the from honey stomach food goes to the ventriculars through the egg shaped opening known as the proventriculars regulating the passage of food to the ventriculars the another very important part to remove the pollen from the nectars and nectar is retained in honey sac and pollen passes into the ventriculars the actual process of the digestion of the uh, or the production of the honeybee we will discuss in the next uh, slide i have the videos uh, for you so then discuss about the nectar is regurgitated uh, in the comb cells for the conversion into the cells so what is mean by regurgitating so some uh, some animals uh, as like the rabbit uh, the undigested food is uh, repelled or extended outside uh, to the body and that food is again eaten by that particular uh, animals 
So what happened? Undigested food is removed from the bodies. Again, uh, that uh, undigested food is ingested by the uh, the that particular animal. That that process is called as the regurgitation. So the same happened in that. What happened? The uh, when the nectars and the pollen is enters into the uh, or the uh, enters into the particular bee uh, honey bees and they exclude into the outside to their that body into the different worker bees and uh, here that that bees is convert that uh, that uh, pollens or the nectars into the honey. The what are the different processes used for the conversion of that nectar or the pollen to the honey? We will discuss in the uh, next video. Dear friends, as we know that. The reproductive organs are fully developed in the queens and the drones, but generally reduced in the workers. So as we know that the, the functions of the queens, drones and workers are different. So generally drones and queens are plays important role only the uh, give the birth to the young ones or the in the reproduction while the workers plays a crucial role for the cleaning, then uh, cleaning hive, construction of the hives, nursing the young ones and the uh, collecting the pollens. Uh, then converting that pollen grains nectars to the honeybee that means the lot of function was carried out by the workers uh, instead of the drones and the queens then we talk about the uh, sperms are stored in the queen in the sac like structure known as the spermatica this spermatica here we see that this spermatica is a very a small a delicious uh, sac like structure we used to store the uh, the sperms so the stores the sperm are uh, utilized by queen throughout her life uh, time as she does not go for mating once start eggling. That means they are when that particular queens are going to uh, egg eggling purpose. At that time, what happened? The store sperm are used to fertilize that particular eggs. So this is about the important uh, anatomical features of the honeybees.